everybody, this is uh, Jim at sp500chart.com. It is Saturday evening, a little bit after 8 o'clock on March 7th, 2020. We're going to take a look at the chart and review the week ending March 6th. And before we do that, let me remind you, the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at this site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and please make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. We start, oops, let me recenter that chart. Hold on. Thought I had that thing all ready to go and it was all out of whack. So anyway, uh, we're starting out here looking at a weekly chart. Each candle on this chart is one week of trading. And you can see right here, particularly last week, that, that, last, can that last week's candle was, was, I think, probably the longest red candle you're going to find on this chart. And it goes all the way back to uh, late 2010. Just a horrid week. But if you look at it in the context of the overall uh, development and progress of the S&P, it's still within the bounds that we have established. And remember, we did one thing, uh, I believe, last week where we have sort of an alternate uh, support line down here. When, you, when you're dealing with support lines, you want to find a low that leads to a new high. Those are the important things. And on this chart, you know, if we're looking for th if we're looking for that in the big picture, we've got three spots. We've got the lows of 2011, we got the lows in early 2016, and we have the lows in late 2018. Unfortunately, those do not make a straight line. And this is a logarithmic chart. They're even worse on an arithmetic. Uh, actually, it might not be that worse, but it's not. they don't line up any way you look at it. And I use a log chart. And for that reason, I've got two lines here. I've got this one, and I've got this one. Because it's, if, if these three low points right here, here, and here, and interesting to note, all three of these formed... Uh, this one isn't quite as clear, but this one is an obvious inverted head and shoulders pattern right here. Hold on just a second. Their uh, explorer had to warn me about something, and I, so I had to make that go away. So anyway, you got these three points. If we use the first two, then we get this blue line, and that's where uh, our selling stopped last week. Uh, and if we use this point, then we have a, a different uh, line of support. And I guess you could say, well, why do you start here? Couldn't you start one there and run it across the bottom? Yeah, we could do that. But what I sort of like about this line is it, it is almost exactly parallel to our long-term resistance line. So th this, this could be the right one here, but, but I think this one could also have some effect. Also, we're talk we've been talking about a couple of inverted head and shoulders patterns for quite a while. This one right here in the S&P, we, we mentioned, uh, and remember when we got uh, in, into early spring, we mentioned that we had a target of 3370 from this pattern. We made that target just before this big sell-off. Now, if you look at this inverted head and shoulders pattern, I think it's got something, maybe, not necessarily, but might be a lesson. And that is, it looked like it was in the process of failing. Remember, we had this little uh, red danger zone here that when we got underneath that neckline, the further we got into that red box, uh, the more doubt was cast upon the validity of this pattern. It ended up writing itself, coming back for a little uh, new bottom here, right above that neckline, another pullback, then it went off and made the target. If we look at this really big inverted head and shoulders pattern, 
Remember when we broke out of this one, we did so in a rising wedge right there. That wedge came back to where it started to form. That's what wedges tend to do. Then we got about our business. When we broke out over this neckline, we did so, interestingly enough, in a rising wedge that broke down and that wedge started to form at about 28.64 and what was our low two weeks ago? Uh, excuse me, our, our low actually was on, um, no, hold on, 28.61. So that wedge, if we're looking at that to do its thing, it did so Friday a week ago. Now, we came back up to our neckline, tried to get over it on Wednesday, actually rallied back strong uh, from the lows uh, on, on, on Friday to the close on Monday, had, uh, had a reversal take place on Tuesday, but then another nice day on Wednesday. Then it was uh, sort of sort of mess. And again, we're, we're in this pink zone where the deeper we go, the less likely uh, that inverted head and shoulders pattern is to pan out. Now remember, we're talking about the big one here, not that smaller one. The big one points us all the way with a target at 38 40. So the question is this, is what we saw in the way of a pullback over the past two weeks getting into this, into this uh, pink area here, is that sort of anal analogous to what we saw uh, back in the middle of 2019? And because we had that rising wedge in the breakout here, the rising wedge in the breakout, the, the uh, a, pull back to the neckline, and we got a little initial bounce here like we did there, but I sort of think this coronavirus has accelerated the selling. I think this was probably going to happen anyway, because we had that wedge before anybody was talking about coronavirus. That wedge was the setup. That, that's really the thing, you know, that it did the exact same thing that it did back here. I just think maybe the coronavirus sort of kicked it into high gear. So if you were thinking about selling, boy, you hear about the coronavirus, you're definitely selling. And I think that may be what has taken place. Now, I made a terrible call this past week, and, uh, and that was... It looked like we had, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. It looked so pretty. You know, we had this descending wedge here. It did what it was supposed to do. And then Thursday, we had another descending wedge. And it absolutely did the opposite. Instead of us rallying out of that wedge, as is the vast majority of cases, the market's had to had to deal with some more coronavirus fears, so we gapped down, and we really uh, were at a pretty steep loss there, um, just a little bit after three o'clock. Then all of a sudden, somebody kicks something into gear, and we see about a two percent, a little bit better than a two percent recovery off of those lows. Going in to next week, what are we thinking here? Well. Uh, because this is so heavily news-driven, I'm reticent to try to make a short-term prediction. Remember, trend lines are like speed bumps. They're not brick walls. And when we're dealing particularly with small trend lines, they're not very good speed bumps. If you get a small move, if you get a, if you get a medium amount of pressure from world events, from this virus thing, then a medium strength trend line will take care of it. You won't go over that line or you won't get under it. But if you have a medium strength trend line and all of a sudden you have a really significant world event, it's not going to hold up. You're going you're gonna to take the trend line out. So all trend lines can be broken. It just depends uh, 
it, it depends upon the strength of either whatever is is providing the impetus for either selling or buying whatever news is strong enough uh, to take a line out all of them can be taken out so it sort of looks to me like like uh, we're, we would be poised to start the week out green but <laughs> You know, I, I'm not going to make any kind of prediction whatsoever. All I'll say is we're looking at the chart, we're looking at patterns, and we know that this pink area right here, as long as we stay in this area, then I don't think we're we're uh, we're in. I don't think our target of 3840 is completely off the table. If we start getting down below 2800, 2750, at that point, I think I'd probably say, forget that pattern, let's see what develops uh, ahead. But as long as we stay in this pink area, there is hope. And, and it, just to remind you, what is special about that pink area? Well, first off, this is a rectangle. In a perfect world, it would follow this neckline here. So it's going to move up just a little bit over time. But the lower part of it is defined by the lower part of the uh, right shoulder in this inverted head and shoulders pattern. It's not terribly unusual to come back and test those levels. But really, a, a well-performing inverted head and shoulders pattern doesn't do that. Instead, you get a bounce on the neckline. Remember, back here, same drill. We drew this box under the neckline, but above the lower part of the right shoulder. And we came back down, made that test. Then we came back and broke out again and started on our way. So... I know I've been talking a lot. I'm going to slow down just a bit. Um, all I can say is we have to let this thing work out. I'm sort of trying to figure out what's going on with the news. I'm trying to figure out the severity of it. The fact of the matter is this. This is a new thing, and, the, and markets don't like uncertainty. But I'll tell you this, and, and, I, think, and I think I mentioned this uh, in, in one of the videos during the week that every year between 17,000 and 41,000 Americans die due to influenza. And of those people who are hospital with the flu, between 7 and 8% will die. That's just a fact. Did you know that every year Johns Hopkins has done a study? They believe that every year a quarter of a million United States citizens die due to medical mistakes. Think about that. And, you know, so it will, so what we're looking at here is scary, and it's unknown, and it's spreading, and we think Andromeda strain, we think outbreak, we think all kinds of terrible things. But so far, it looks like it's a bad flu. And they say 80% of the people who, catch, people who catch it will not be in any t type of real trouble. They'll get sick, and then they'll get over it. So, um... That said, let's just keep watching this chart together, see what happens, see how well the markets can absorb the news, and there is your weekly review uh, for the week ending March 6th, uh, 2020. Sorry I ran a little long. I do that from time to time. Oh, and just a heads up, I think maybe for subscribers, uh, maybe Monday's video will throw in not only the S&P, but we'll look at the NASDAQ as well as the Dow Jones uh, 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 industrials. So we'll see, see what's going on. I, th I think everything is pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, maybe on your own time, take a look at the NASDAQ chart. See what you get out of it. I, th I think it's, it's an interesting chart where we bounce. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching. And as always, thanks for your very kind support. Take care.